Hey, my name is Attorney Walter, if not the third, and the question we did before was basically, uh, what would be harder, or what type of individual would be more difficult to get onto the disability program? Would it be, uh, you know, a specialist doctor, or would it be a homeless individual? Okay. We just did the specialist doctor, now we're going to be doing um, a homeless individual. So you can kind of understand the details uh, behind this. And remember, there's a lot of assumptions that are being made when we go through these two types of individuals because we're trying to do the archetypal individual that you traditionally see in this field or in this category of situation. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and begin a homeless individual. Are they going to have an easier time getting on the program than a you know physician specialist, or are they going to have a harder time? Well, let's go, you know, there's both here, so let's go ahead and start with the benefits. First and foremost, <clears throat> let's say that uh, the court goes ahead and say, says, uh, you're in our jurisdiction, and the court is way off somewhere, and it's ridiculous, and, you know, there's no way that the homeless person is going to be able to get there, right? Well, it's usually easier to transfer, um, you know, and get them from one hearing office to another um, if, for example, they're homeless, because you can get a certification of homelessness from one of those local, you know, help the homeless uh, groups, which will state that they're unable to basically travel or get to certain places without the assistance of, for example, somebody else, and that they are, for the most part, based in this geographic area. Ergo, they're basically going to have to have a hearing right around that spot. <clears throat> now, some people will, you know, a doctor in that case, they'd expect them they expect them to basically drive over, but, you know, in some cases, like, for example, the Jacksonville hearing office, it's like no matter what you do for the most part, they want to keep the hearing, keep the hearing, keep the hearing in Jacksonville. And Jacksonville has some of the lowest passage rate judges, um, you know, in the state. In fact, they do have the lowest passage, passage rate judge in the state, um, which is fine. You know, it's, that's fine. So what you need to know is that there are ways to basically get the hearing office transferred um, to the actual location of the claimant. There's another thing you need to keep in mind, which is that those claimants tend to have not a huge education background. Otherwise, they'd be able to usually find some sort of job out there that they'd be able to do. Uh, their English, their diction, their syntax, their ability to be fluent in the English language is, well, let's call it like it is, uh, not always, you know, as good of a, as a physician doctor who has a, you know, doctor degree and a specialist degree on top of that, which is usually considered a master's or another doctorate. So what we're dealing with here is a situation where we're really going to be looking at the grittings. You know, are they going to grit out? Um, is their education where it needs to be? Is their age where it needs to be? Is their academia, or whether that's education, is their work history where it needs to be? Now, homeless individuals tend to have not the highest grouping of, you know, uh, basically uh, work history environments that are around. You know, they usually did, uh, you know, shoveling jobs or, you know, work track jobs or, you know, they're out there doing construction or they're doing motel work and things like that. It doesn't mean those are bad jobs, just means that those are traditionally the jobs that you would see with this type of individual, okay? Now, the next thing that you need to keep in mind is that, uh, you know, these types of individuals will usually have an easier time at the vocational analysis section of the hearing. So, <clears throat> you're really shooting for gratings and vocational allowance, uh, where they basically can't do the work that which they're claiming that they could do in the national economy. Why? Because many of the jobs they do are either semi-skilled or unskilled. I don't run into a ton of skilled jobs that a lot of homeless individuals have. So right then and there, a lot of job options that they could potentially do as part of the vocational hypothetical question brought forward at the administrative law judge hearing are mostly, you know, can they do, you know, we're automatically bumping the whole thing down a couple of levels. So there's no skilled and very rarely we'll see semi-skilled and it's shooting for right there, unskilled. Okay. So... <clears throat> right off the bat, it's probably a little bit easier to get a vocational allowance, okay? Now, the listing thing is a little bit tougher for them usually because they don't have the background with medical evidence that a lot of these, you know, well, let's say a rich doctor or a doctor that was a specialist would have, okay? So you're basically having a harder time meeting a medical listing for disability benefits or a CAL, compassion allowance listing, 
you're having an easier time with a gridding because they have low education, low vocational track history, and also, <clears throat> you know, you got to look at their age and things like that and where that applies. So, homeless, the first thing I think of, gridding, vocational allowance. Uh, doctor, things like that, first thing I'm thinking, go to the listings, okay? And here's why. A vocational allowance requires that you go all the way through the five-step sequential process, okay? Gridding is kind of its own little special thing. It was a statute created where it's like its own little shoots and ladder fast track where basically if you meet these things and you are severely disabled, you know, then da 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 you can be found disabled. So it's its own little unique thing. And then the listings, basically, you, all you have to do is go to step three if you meet a listing. You don't even have to go through all the way to step five because the analysis at that point ends because you have met what they automatically know because these predetermined list of disabilities are so bad that they know that you can't do the work. You can't go out there and do a full-time job. Ergo, you can't earn substantial gainful activity. Therefore, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to afford anything and you're not going to be able to live. You're going to need the support of the government to pay for you. Okay. So that's just how I think about it when I think about, okay, this person is this type of individual where we should be really looking at this, this right away. Now, does that mean you shouldn't be looking at No, you got to look at everything, every option, every track. That's what a good attorney does. The attorney will sit there and say, hmm, how am I going to be able to get this person through? What options do I need to utilize to get this person literally through and on track? So that's just something to consider. Either way, um, my name is attorney Walter of Not the Third. I'm with Disability Resolution PA in Orlando Orange County based Social Security Disability Law Firm. If you have any questions for your unique claim or you want the most up-to-date information, that's fine. Give me a call. Also, um, if you <clears throat> want a customized video about your particular issues, that's fine, but we actually don't do those. We only do general tutorial videos. So send me a request for a topic that you would like covered. All right. Also, try not to post um, information in the you know, YouTube blog area about your particular claim or the Vimeo area or the Daily Motion area or the whatever because you don't want to put your stuff out there. You want to go ahead and just shoot me a private email or shoot or give me a call and we'll go through it from there. All right. You have an absolutely wonderful day. I'll catch up with you later and thank you so much. Bye bye.